This is my buddy. He is uh, he's a cool chicken. <laughs> Look who I got. These two roosters are the twins. They're inseparable. We call them Millie Vanilli. The one with the dark legs is Millie, and the one with the tan legs is Vanilli. We're rather attached to these roosters, so they'll probably be hanging out, and they're pretty gentle. You should feel this dude. He's really heavy. Another day in the life of the chickens. It's all over your beak, dude. I have one piece of advice for the young ladies out there. Marry somebody who makes you laugh. Me thinks the dishes are out of control. <laughs> There's a, there's a unicorn doing my dishes. <laughs> they do exist! <laughs> what noises does a unicorn make? I think it's more like a horse, wouldn't it be? <laughs> it sounded like a horse choking. <laughs> Made it more like. Brindley, I think you need to spend more time with your horse. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the ranch. Hi. So we're really excited. We have big news. We have actually finally gotten our horses to lift their feet. about this because we have no idea what we're doing this is our first time of course we've done the research we've watched the videos um, but watching videos and reading about it is a lot different than executing it so right. we have been working for quite a while on getting these horses comfortable with us coming anywhere near their feet crystal behind us she's a mare she's an Appaloosa mare and she does not like her feet touch. She doesn't like you anywhere near her feet. And so it was quite exhausting just trying to get her to allow us to touch her hooves without her jumping around and running around. I've mentioned on a previous video that we had a farrier come out and it took him hours to get Crystal's feet trimmed. She ran us all around her pen. It was exhausting and borderline traumatizing for all of us. So Mark and I decided we are not going to put another person in danger that way. Um, these are our horses. We need to take responsibility for them. So we plunged into some research. We found some great trainers on YouTube that we gleaned a lot of wisdom from. Um, and then it was time to put it into practice. So. The one video we found that was the most helpful in regards to teaching a horse how to pick up their feet, because there are many of them out there, but we came across this particular trainer and I'm going to put a link to her video below because it was, um, it was the method that um, basically gave us this breakthrough. We were really starting to wonder if we had gotten into something that we shouldn't have because we were having a hard time with it. Now, we didn't get hurt, the horses didn't get hurt, um, 
but if any of you have ever been in this position before, you know that a horse can really wear you out physically, especially when it comes to their feet because they don't know right away to hold up their own foot. So instead, they like to lay their thousand pound body on you and let you hold them up. Right. And <laughs> that can be quite taxing on you. So um, this particular method, I wish I had some footage of how we went about this, but um, we didn't know it was gonna be successful. So in our um, effort to just try it out, we missed a lot of opportunities to get it on video. So I'm just gonna kind of explain what we did because now the footage ahead, they're already um, past the point of don't touch me. So. Basically, we start out every session with grooming. Come on, Tilly, freak her out. Come on, come on. I don't know why Tilly always comes over when I'm working with Crystal because I'm all freaked out by her. Well, Crystal's probably freaked out because she knocked that board out of the stall. <laughs> no, I'm coming for you. you. Don't go in and just start grabbing at their feet. We brush them, love on them. You know, pet them, let them fart on us, those types of things. <laughs> Nothing says a relaxed horse like a fart. How is your horse feeling? Well, he farted four times already. Give them some hay to eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give them something to eat. Then we slowly work our way down onto their legs and just get them used to our presence being on their legs so we don't startle them. Um, and at that point, I start to tap on the back of their leg and I just tap, I just annoy them. I just tap, 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 tap until they move that leg. The moment they move that leg, I back away. I release all pressure, I turn my body. That gives them an understanding, oh, you want me to move my foot. So at first, they're pulling their foot away from you. And um, some people would say you're training them to move away from you, but um, the next step kind of eliminates that problem. So once they understand that tapping the foot means move the foot, you grab that foot and pull it gently forward. What I found that this um, was the key to us being successful in this is that it eliminated the ability for them to put their whole body weight on top of me because I was in front of them instead of at their shoulder. So I would pull their foot out from in front and just kind of gently hold on to it a couple inches above the ground until they kind of got their balance and their bearings. And then I made sure I put their foot down and didn't let them pull their foot away from me. If at any time they pull their foot away, now they've learned they can do that. So you basically need to just continue that process until you are putting their foot down in that session and end the session that way.
So for a while, it was just um, a, tapping their leg and and releasing pressure when they moved it and getting that accomplished on all four legs because both of them have one sensitive leg that they don't want to move. <laughs> So I don't know what that's about, but there's one leg on each of them that is like, don't touch me there. <laughs> little dragon. Like, I ain't big enough. <laughs> I wonder if she has something stuck in there. Good girl. Good. You get cookies. Yeah, you get two cookies. And I am running out of footage. Mm -hmm. So that took a while just getting them used to us tapping and then moving their legs. Once we got that established, then I began the process of lifting the front hoof out in front of them forward just a couple inches off the ground. Now I only did that with the front feet. Um, this trainer does it with the back feet. I couldn't get them to do that. Um, they just, they would start jumping and freaking out and I am not going to put myself in a dangerous position. However, once I worked enough with their front feet, they just kind of figured out their back feet on their own. So I really didn't have to, which was nice. After that step of getting them to lift their foot in front, um, the key to that is that they're holding their own weight. Once they're holding their own weight, then I came around the side and I was lifting them up and that's where we had success and I was able to hold their foot up in the correct position for picking or trimming um, without them laying their whole body on top of me. So that was a huge breakthrough for us in and of itself. Good girl. Wow. Maybe we should take you for a ride today. <laughs> no? She's already flexing her muscle like she's going to pop her leg up for you. After doing that for a little while, I was finally able to get Indigo to lift most of his feet, three of the four, because it's that fourth one that's tricky long enough to actually pick them and clean them. And that was so exciting. That was such a big moment. So we have been cleaning his feet successfully, even that one that he's temperamental with. Um, and he's doing really well. Crystal is our little spitfire. And so she takes a little bit more patience and a little bit more love. And so in this video that we decided to start sharing with you guys, and we'll move from this video forward in our um, progress with her, I'm just happy I got her feet up. If you notice in one of the clips, she actually lifts her back foot for me and holds it without me barely touching her. <laughs> yeah. Very smart. You're a very smart girl. 
You're very smart, Smarty. You gonna tear this place apart one stick at a time? Tilly, are you feeling left out? You're making this training session difficult, Tilly. This is huge, guys. <laughs> like, you have no idea. I wish I had footage of this horse running me around in circles. Um, but so far, everybody is healthy and happy. Nobody's gotten hurt or injured. Nobody's traumatized. Like I said, we've been taking their training very slow and at our pace because we are learning along with them. And we just wanna make sure that their core um, care needs are taken care of. That's the most important thing. Um, and so obviously their hooves are huge on that list and then once we get to a place where we've got some good ground manners we're doing good on the halter we're doing good with our our um, hoof trimming then we're going to move in towards carrying blankets carrying saddles um, carrying people on our backs and just kind of get them acclimated for that our family is going to be taking some riding lessons because what good does it do to pay a trainer to come out and train these horses to ride when we don't know how to ride um, they're going to lose their training we're going to have wasted that money and we're going to have to do it again so we are going to invest in some family riding lessons and get our bearings as to um, actually riding a horse and then we will implement that to our horses our horses are young they're two and three years old we have no intention of riding until they're five I know this is a controversial topic but by the research we've done it's not worth the chance to us and we're not in a hurry so we're waiting until they're five when um, when we can be sure that their vertebrae and their back is fully developed and ready to handle um, the weight of people we are not light people if you've noticed <laughs> we're packing a few pounds maybe they can carry the kids with no problem right now and, and we might do that we might acclimate them with the kids um, of course very carefully after the kids have gone through some training uh, we've already had Piper up on Indigo's back he was as still as a statue of course we are holding on to Piper and there will be helmets involved and all of those things we wouldn't put her on there if we didn't feel confident that Indigo was safe with her he's right. very 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 careful with her Um, we have been working with him having blankets on his back putting pressure on his back he hasn't moved so we went ahead and put Piper up there holding on to her and he froze completely froze um, so he's he's really aware of her presence and careful with her so um, yeah so we're making progress we're excited about that I mean going from zero to horses in two years. We feel like we're making some headway and we're just thanking the Lord for his um, help and wisdom and um, holding our hand through this process, bringing the right people around, bringing the right um, information to us. Um, and so we're excited to see how this plays out. So come along with us as we continue this journey and um, celebrate these milestones with us. Right? That's right. Right. Yay! Yay!